um, slightly difficult for me. I didn't used to spring up the way I used to. So I I was I then I was still very young, so I didn't know that it was a disability or something. I didn't know anything was wrong. I just knew that I I'm, I'm not able to get up from a squatting position like I used to. So I would just lean like this and then pull myself up. Gradually, it progressed to when I sit down, maybe in the church, and it's time for offering. Everybody is getting up and it's time for me to get up. I'm struggling to get up. Because of that, I used to be so ashamed to, you know, when it gets to my our role to stand up for offering. My schoolmates, they're calling me, hot stepper so i didn't know that it affected my as my working step had changed somewhere around 20, 2007 i fell down for the first time you know so when i when i fell down just like that i couldn't i didn't understand why i fell down prior to that we have my mommy and my, my mom and dad always you know they're always angry at me the way i do my things especially my mom she would be asking me to bend down properly and sweep. Why am I sweeping the way I'm sweeping? And I'm the only girl, so uh, in my family, being someone that is used to doing many of these chores, and all of a sudden I'm beginning to find them very hard to. They couldn't understand, so we started going to prayers because she thought it was a spiritual problem. So while we are doing that, we are also going to hospital. You know, would they ask us to do X-ray? from x-ray to other types of tests and they will say nothing is wrong with me sonia narrates to against all odds how her neighbor who understood her condition referred her to a professor of medicine who diagnosed her and made her understand that she has muscular dystrophy luckily for us his, his hospital is in the east and we were in the east at that time so when we went there, he just told me to lie down on the bed. I lay down. He said I should do a few things, which I tried to do. He said, share I'm internet literate. I said, yes. He said, I should Google muscular dystrophy and read about it. So when I read about it, it just was what I was going through. Frequent falling, um, difficulty getting up from the seat, um, difficulty, uh, difficulty climb, climbing the stairs, uh, abnormal gates and all that you know so that was it and when i read i didn't have a cure and all that those few um let's say days or weeks i was down i was down for a while but i just made up my mind that i was not going to pay attention to it i'm just going to live my life normal This butter is not, it's not effective like that. Can you see me? <laughs> While speaking to Sonia, curiosity arose. This disease is without a cure. Just maybe there's a prevention. And so we spoke to a doctor to enlighten us more about muscular dystrophy. The, the, the gene for muscular dystrophy it's there at birth but somewhere around the age of two to three years the child begin to manifest with weakness of the muscle because the problem is with the muscle the gene that synthesizes a particular protein that ensures muscle function that gene is defective therefore that protein is not produced when that protein is not produced, the muscle begins to fail with time. It begins to weaken out and with time, the patient begins to manifest with progressive weakness of the muscles. The muscles, our muscles are what help us to move. Muscles help us to breathe. The heart muscles help the heart to pump. So when there is a disease that threatening the integrity of the muscles it begins to manifest in weakness and that's why many of them will end up in the wheelchair because they can't walk they can't help themselves so they end up in the wheelchair you know, others may need to use crutches and then but the, the strongest killer for patients with muscular dystrophy 
is when there's a manifestation of heart problem because like i said the heart muscle helps to pump the heart if the heart muscles becomes weak then there's a problem or if the respiratory muscles are affected we are able to breathe in and out because our respiratory muscles are functioning if those ones also become weak we are not able to breathe in and out and then that's a problem you know if anybody cannot breathe it's a problem so these are some of the manifestations of muscular dystrophy yes it's not one size fit all some start at the age of two years especially the type that is called the duchenne muscular dystrophy yes and usually around 16 17 most of the children affected are dead yes but it's common in male Another very common one is the Dr. Otabo pointed out a perfect picture of what Sonia is presently going through. She is one of the very few people with muscular dystrophy that are still standing on their feet. When I'm in school, people will be advising me to go and take care of my health and that school is is not running away. <laughs> but I didn't pay attention to them. I I my whole where we normally have lectures la, about Ofrima. I don't even know the uh, University of Otago Ofrima last floor, very about four or five story buildings. I, I wouldn't want to climb with my classmates, so they don't really know what is wrong with me. I always take another staircase because it has a lot of staircases, and I had a very good roommate who, who was also my classmate. Uh, Tejiri Obisare. Shout out to Tejiri. <laughs> she was such an angel. She was the one that made life in school bearable. So she and also on one of my one or other another of my friend, Amaka Ilobelu. Yes, that was when I was in the hostel because I let her move out from the hostel. They were really very helpful. That was how I successfully finished the university. Came out with a two one by the special grace of God and i studied computer science by the way when it was time to pre prepare for youth service i had to apply for conditional posting so that they would post me to abuja where my i have my sibling bearing in mind that muscular dystrophy has no cure yet sonia has decided to live her life each day as it comes doing things that makes her absolutely happy <laughs> one day i just saw an advert sponsored advert that people were just interested the person was advertising for facebook ad sponsored ad ah and i saw that it i saw so many comments that they were interested they were interested ah and it's something that i can do i was like wow are you serious people are interested in this kind of service I now uh, quickly created my own uh, package and see if people will be, will be interested. And that's how people started showing interest. And from there, I started servicing them. So I stopped my nine to five and then I and my brother were living here together. So he was also very supportive financially in terms of providing what we're eating while I supported the little I, 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 I can. I've also written a book while I was in that my nine to five. I wrote a book, so wish I sold everything about 200 copies. For me, I just believe that the quality of a human being is comes with the value they bring, not just about their physical abilities. My brain is working 247. A lot of times, the things that I see people struggle with, I, I find it weird because I've done the calculation and I know how to go about it and get it done. Environmental barrier is one of the factors that has hindered Sonia from achieving and functioning the way she would have loved to. If I have a good environment and I can walk, like now, if I want to do anything, I have to come outside and pour water. If I'm cooking in the kitchen, come on, come on, I'll have to come out and pour water. If I'm washing, I have to come out and pour water. Everything, I have to come out and pour water here. You understand uh, so but if if the environment if the house has a zinc where i can be pouring water and i can do things i can wash dishes and everything it will really help me because the more i do stuff myself the more my muscle is um it's 
maintained you understand the current strength i have so another thing i noticed when i lived doing something for a long time i'm unable to even do that thing again like right now to open a sachet of pure water i can't like attend events now they are sharing drinks i cannot drink if it is not can and there is no straw i can't drink because to raise my hand and drink it is a problem for me you understand except i have a table that i can lean and even i'm not the only one that they will give table to now so to draw the table as comfortable as it should you understand it's a, it's, it's it's something that i don't get the opportunity so i just forfeit the drink it's, if it is bottle drink then food the same thing if i have a table that i need to walk walk to that place where people follow um, yes so i'll now get a bite from there so my neighbors have been very very helpful like sometimes i fall down in the middle of the night my neighbor will climb the roof to come and help me in the middle of the night my neighbor's husband yes and this other of my neighbor too <laughs> This is against all odds. You know, in terms of all this, you keep falling and all that from everything you've said. For me, I, I feel it's very risky you staying alone. Don't you think it is risky? I need, I actually need someone to stay with me, but it has to be someone that really is passionate about helping. Not someone that is, is grudgingly going to be there. Otherwise, it will worsen my condition instead of, instead of helping me. So I'm still on the lookout. I haven't gotten yet. I don't have a sister like I said earlier. A biological sister. Yes. There was even a time I fell down my phone as I was I wanted to cross the road. I fell as in okay, I was standing, standing, standing for, for long. So somebody one man in the night, one man, instead of him to just cross, you he wanted to cross, it's a two way road. I've crossed the first one, then it's many the second one. That we say side we said so so the man came and quickly dragged my hand that night you know it, it's like he has been watching me standing there since so he thought he could help me to cross you understand so he just came and dragged my hand so as i was trying to cross he was too fast and i fell down in the middle of the road so he now dragged me quickly meanwhile my bag car has already climbed my bag fell off from my shoulders car climbed my bag and and um, crashed my my phone so after it was after that incident i started becoming tired of continuing before then i had already had accident to one of the times i'm coming back from work in the night getting people to understand my condition not many people a lot of people do not like to be stressed can't be asking someone to do every single thing for you at a point they, they will get very aggressive they'll be very they'll start treating you in a way that instead of you to focus on what makes you happy you're focusing on them you understand so it's it's for now my peace of mind and gaining financial stability is priority for me she desires to hang out meet people and be happy but marriage is not her priority right now she shares some painful experiences. Then I was living with my uncle, and we saw at uh, Shoprite. Immediately he told me, and uh, because I didn't tell him ab about my condition, then I was still hiding. So immediately we sat down. I told him about it. He just told me, Papa, and complained that we cannot continue the relationship. This is somebody that already posted me on his wall, uh, posted saying that I'm whatever, whatever. And I thought we were in love. When I now told him, you know, you know, he, but he played for what we had, Sha. He was, he didn't say anything. All throughout, all throughout, I was sitting down there. He was just looking at me like one moment. We didn't say anything. After everything he left, I was so upset. Like, I cried because I was really in love with this guy. It's a pity, but whatever the case is, I'm happy. <laughs> if God says there is going to be somebody, good and fine. And if no, if there's not going to be somebody, my priority is making heaven. You know, so I don't 
I'm not living. I just want to be financially stable so I can do things that I want to do. That's what I really desire. But I have come to a point whereby I don't let people into my life. I have to prove to me. If you see the questionnaire I give to them online, you will say you will, you will say that I'm very strict, but that's just the way forward. Even at that, people people are still bent on trying to destroy my life. They are still bent on trying to scam me because I keep getting all sort of taxes. You know, when somebody is coming and professing love and telling you how much they love you and what they can do for you, and you know. If you say you will not give all of them a chance, how do you not know who is the real one? That was why I just said, okay, let me just give this one a chance more, and it still failed. Okay. This is against all odds. It's not easy for parents to understand that their child has a certain type of disability and all that for them to get used to it and all so for this your parents how are they coping with this it took them a, a long time even to tomorrow my mom still does not understand the condition because if she was here now she would keep telling me how to do something you understand like i have to keep explaining to her about this condition but she's just not getting it she's 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 still trying to make me understand that we can do it i should just bend down i should carry it i should if you see where she's telling me what to do she will not understand it will be as if though you know i'll keep explaining to her mommy i'll not be able to do it i won't be able to carry she will say carry it carry it you can do it <laughs> sometimes i wake up and my uncles will just hook I can't move my legs. So my parents, uh, they don't understand. But what will I do? All I want to do is when I make the money, I'll take good care of them. And they will see that, yes, after all, that daughter is not useless. Sonia's gaze is towards the brighter side of life. She believes in miracles that someday the cure for muscular dystrophy will be found just because of her. When the heart is manifesting, quickly see the cardiologist who would prescribe medications that would help the heart to pick up and keep functioning you know, until uh, to support the system until such a time when uh, life cannot be sustained again. One thing I know is that I didn't come to this world by myself. So I just know that God is going to see me through. I don't want to be thinking about what will happen then. You understand? So if if I'm still alive at that time, God will definitely make provision for that. That is just how that is how um, I think or how I reason. You understand? I don't want to allow things like that because there are people who don't even have any physical disability but they are dead they did not even reach my age and they died you see i don't want things to be weighing me down i don't want i don't want this condition i don't even read about it i don't like to read about it because it will just it will make me feel depressed it make me feel hopeless i just want to believe in the future i believe that god can do something tomorrow god can say that god can provide a cure and we will hear that there is now a cure for muscular dystrophy i can wake up tomorrow and god will heal me too you understand so i don't know i just don't want to think about all those I don't know why things are coming out. I don't want to think about all those things that could happen in the future. I don't want because somebody that doesn't even have any physical disability can have an accident and they will lose all the abilities that they have. It happens. That's why these guys were disappointing somebody. It's important we re-emphasize the words of Dr. Otabo, which tax parents to be vigilant and look out for signs like this in their children. The child is not able to run like the other children, probably falling frequently. And then from a, from a sitting down position, and the child, instead of just rising to his feet, he has to do certain kind of maneuvering 
to be able to get up because he's trying to overcome the weak uh, limb muscles and then eventually he's able to get up and then continue his journey but that's the warning sign that something is wrong with this child and parents who are observant will pick those signs and then as time goes on those manifestations become more um, prominent the child cannot involve in sports you know and um, the with time the upper limb is affected you know the child is not able to lift objects that every other person of his age is able to lift you know and so it continues like that depending on the severity and the velocity of change of the symptoms so the child can quickly move into the wheelchair maybe why it's still in primary school uh, before they could hardly survive childhood yeah, but with advancement in medical care some children are now able to even go to the university and some get married and have children hmm. life goes on no matter the condition or situation we're currently going through be rest assured that the creator is aware and he will surely give you the capacity and strength to face it until the button plays stop you okay you will be fine okay, yeah. are you okay now yes i'm okay in life we have to live with so many things that just comes our way you remember the saying when they throw you Broken eggs, you use them to make omelets. And when you have lemons, you make lemonades with them. Sonia has been able to live through with her situation. I can imagine. Just take a look at that scenario of them trying to help her and carry her up. See me standing here. I want to throw my hands up. I can throw them into the air and just do everything I want to do. But she's happy. She's happy. Nothing has been able to take away her happiness. It's very important for us to know that we live in a society with different types of people, with different types of condition. That I wear a smile doesn't make me perfect. Just be more attentive. Look closely and be ready to help. It's been an amazing time with Sonia on this episode. And I want to believe that you've taken something with you home. Let's do this again next week, same time, same station. It's Doshima Pius Ikiravi, the program against all odds. Bye bye. <laughs>are you a new or an upcoming business owner have you been in business for so long but still look up and come in do you know why your growth is being stampeded or perhaps even going back there could be a lot of reasons but it's definitely not your village people do you know there could be things you are doing to attract failure what could they be join us on wednesday the 2nd of November 2022, as we get to understand the tiny things that kill our businesses. Only on Conversation. Technology, the mother of all inventions, has influenced various aspects of human existence that in numerous difficulties has been brought to the various level. Travel as a form of communication has been made simple through the invention of the motor car, which can travel seven miles in a very short time. Due to various irregularities on the roads like potholes, careless driving, overspeeding and a host of others, the chances of motor cars getting involved in accidents cannot be overlooked. As such, devices like the seatbelt and airbags have been made. Basically, uh, airbags are meant to serve as security for lives and property in our vehicles.
The motor car airbags are safety devices or features designed to protect passengers and drivers in the head of pollution. The question begging for an answer, therefore, is how many car buyers take time to check the cars for airbags when they are purchasing one? And like we car dealers now, if we are going to buy a car, we are buying the one that has a gap because people are going through what is raining. About an airbag in a car, it's supposed to be a supplementary restraint system. It's supposed to be something that helps to assist uh, in during the time of an accident. But it only works well once you have a seatbelt across your chest. Or else otherwise, it can be a dangerous thing in a car. Airbags act as a cushion for passengers, first preventing them from hitting the steering column and dashboard, which may lead to head, shoulder, or even chest injuries. The importance of safety devices in a motor car cannot be overemphasized when purchasing a car. Therefore, it is advised to thoroughly check for those devices before purchasing a car. Hello, everyone. The Convoots presents a fun time for children and teenagers across Nigeria and the globe. Need a torch? I just need that. You learn a thing or two from doing every Saturday by 9:30 a.m. on NTA Network. It is going to be a fun time with Grandma Wura and all the Blue Table Talk with Dave and Jen. Although social media as a channel of communication is inherently harmless, it becomes harmful and damaging when used without discretion and thoughtfulness. Bad social media users spread rumors and fake news without verification. But good social media users stop, reflect, and verify information before sharing it. Be a good social media Government's advice not to work at cross purposes with the country's security agencies as senior police officials meet in Imo State on the 2023 election. President Mohammed Buhari departs for London, United Kingdom. Drops are used in Liu Busa, Niger State capture terrorists. Good morning, Nigeria. Today, we shall review the country's national security. Now for several days, uh, some embassies located in Abuja, uh, talking about the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Bulgaria, among others, reduced their activities on their premises as a result of advisories issued by their governments on an imminent attack, a terror attack on the federal capital territory of city, that is Abuja. Now this development has led to apprehension among residents, both foreign and local in the fct and some foreigners of course have been traveling out with their families 
And President Muhammad Buhari has, however, uh, advised residents to remain calm, reiterating the Council of Security Agencies that things are under control. And a crucial security meeting was convened by the President on Monday, that's yesterday, to further strategize on the best options for improved security preparation. Another security meeting also took place in Ibo State to further enhance operations. Excuse me. That's right. Now, uh, foreign governments have also been advised uh, not to work at cross purposes with Nigeria's security forces by not creating panic in the country because there were reactions uh, from several quarters on the way the advisory by the foreign embassies uh, was announced and the content of the advisory, which some interpreted as uh, not being exactly the correct position of things in the federal capital territory. And though all were quiet and concerned by the development, security experts have been pointing out several efforts to stem the tide of insecurity across the country, including the FCT. Now they draw attention to several arrests of uh, some terrorists in Kaduna and Niger states, uh, as well as uh, some of the arrests that have been made uh, in the federal capital territory itself. And these successes are in addition to voluntary surrender of arms by terrorists and their families in the northeast and west of the country, among other successes. Well, these issues, of course, continue to generate concerns on the need to uh, rejig the country's national security strategies. And uh, all this, of course, are ahead of preparations for the 2023 elections, which are now getting uh, heated up with the campaigns. Yeah, sure. yes, and this is uh, certainly to add into the anxiety of many. Uh, we will be reviewing the country's national security strategies. And good morning, Nigeria. Today, I am Yusuf Adawus, and welcoming you to the program. And I'm Kingsley Osadolo. I join my colleague, Nadabo, to also welcome you to Good Morning Nigeria this Tuesday. As always, we are on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, broadcasting live from our Abuja headquarters studios. In the course of the program, we'll have our complimentary segments. And this will include the principal review of business. For now, Comfort Amodo joins us with the highlights of the morning news. Good morning, Comfort. Good morning, Kesley and Nadabo. Good morning, Nigerians. Here's the morning news. In the build-up to the 2023 general elections, President Mahmoud Buhari has made a strong case for the Nigerian police force to remain a political, firm and loyal to the nation's democratic values. And it is, as it is the only way the police can truly be defined as true friends of the citizens, dependable and trustworthy partners in the drive to advancing democracy. This was while declaring open the conference and retreat for senior police officers in Uwere, Imo State. Police. To sustain his leadership standards, that will guarantee a level playing field and secure public space for the citizens to freely exercise their franchise and for the outcome of elections to be a true revelation of the people's choices. I offer my full assurances. The nation's security agencies say there is no cause for alarm and urge Nigerians to go about their lawful businesses without fear of any kind. Foreign partners are also advised not to work across purposes by creating unnecessary panic in the country. This was the message after an emergency national security meeting called by President Mahmoud Buhari with security chiefs and the leadership of the Nigerian police which focuses on the current state of security in the country. There is no cause for alarm and Nigerians should go about their normal duties as the armed forces and all the security agencies are well poised to protect them accordingly. To, to, to work together, not to defeat the purpose of what we're trying to achieve, uh, which is uh, full security in our country. President Mahmoud Buhari has left Nigeria for London, the British capital, ahead of his routine medical checkup. The president was seen off at the Sam in Bukwe International Airport, aware by the governor of Imo State, Governor Hope Uzadima, shortly after declaring open a three-day retreat for senior police officers, 
also at the airport to bid him farewell were the Chief of Defense Staff General Loki Irabo, Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Faruk Yahya and other top military police officers. There's nothing to say he is unwell. As you and all Nigerians will have seen in the last couple of days, you know, he's been up and about, you know, carrying out the, uh, you know, the affairs of his office with a lot of enthusiasm, energy, you know, running up and down the country. The president is okay. He says a routine medical check. Following the failed mission of terrorists on 221 Battalion Cantonment Wawa, Nubusa, Niger State, combined efforts of the Joint Tax Force and youths in the area have paid off. This is with the arrest and dislodgement of some men, a few of them with gunshot wounds, who were apparently trapped in the woods and came out to look for food. The terrorists who were arrested at different locations, including Gada Village, Oil Bush, were handed over to the military at Wawa Police Station. And as at the time of this report, the Niger military is yet to make official statement to this effect. More than 1.5 million Nigerians are to be engaged as ad hoc personnel to conduct the national population and housing census built for April 2023. Opening the portal in Abuja, NPC Chairman Nasser Isakwara reaffirms the Commission's commitment to ensure fairness and transparency in all census programs towards achieving a credible census outcome. For the 2023 census will be drawn from the communities where they are resident. The adoption of these recruitment approaches to ensure widespread applications from all local localities in the country, minimized by us and ascertain that all qualified Nigerians are given equal opportunity to apply. That's the news for now. The program continues with Kinsley and Nadabo after this break. I'm Comfort Amadou. Good morning. The security situation in Nigeria has been reasonably stable in spite of activities of unpatriotic elements engaged in various criminal activities around the country. Daily situation reports coming in from the states two months ago it has shown relative peace on many of our highways, such as Abuja, Kaduna, Kaduna, Berlingwari, Sokoto, Zamfara, Zamfara, Kaduna. This message is brought to you from the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. As the 2023 elections draw near, remember, evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace, but never take a step to make peaceful elections happen. Are you a father? Are you a mother? What are you saying to your children as elections approach? Have you warned them not to let themselves be used to cause violence? Have you explained to them what the consequences of electoral violence might be? Do your part to make peaceful elections happen. Talk to your children. Protect them. 
even unscrupulous politicians who want to put them in harm's way while their own children are comfortable at home, within and outside the country. Let's join hands to make 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. No. What we face mostly now are flashes of cowardly attacks from the rump of groups that have been routed in one location or the other, moving to another to give the false impression that they are still strong. Our ultimate goal is to eliminate them altogether and restore total and lasting peace over every inch of the Nigerian soil. Sounding tall, we we'll take it home. We are determined to ensure that every inch of the Nigerian soil is safe. That determination is there. The order has been given. But we shall continue to protect the lives and property of Nigerians and foreigners in our midst. We shall continue to work for the peace of the nation and the tar elements that constitute threats to the people. We shall bear the full powers of the government to secure every inch of our land. We shall not rest until peace is fully restored to Nigeria. This message is brought to you from the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Our pastors, our imams, in every church, in every mosque, please, Realize that in the course of praying for peaceful and transparent elections, we all have duties beyond prayers. If we want a stable society before, during and after the elections, what should you be saying to those that worship with you? All Sundays and all Fridays, you are saddled with the responsibility of bringing up good generations. It is therefore your duty to both man and God to ensure peace all the time no matter about elections alone, people talk to people and people listen. Talk to your followers. Make them listen to ensure peaceful 2023 elections. This message from the National Orientation Agency. <laughs> Now, let's talk business. The Executive Secretary of the National Sugar Development Council, NSDC, that is, Zach Adedeji, has solicited the support of governors of sugar producing states in the country towards the revitalization of the sugar subsector. Details of this with Alika Upanachi Arua. The Executive Secretary, National Sugar Development Council, NSDC, Zach, at DDG, requires the input of critical stakeholders towards the revitalization of the sugar subsector. At DDG, who made the appeal during a visit to the governor of Nasara State and chairman Forum of Governors of Sugar Producing States, Sule Abdullahi in Lafia, Nasara State, said that state governors are landlords of sugar projects in their respective domains and have contributed to the modest success so far recorded in the industry. By commending them for creating a safe and enabling environment for sugar operators to go about their business activities without hitches, he says the forum has contributed to the peace enjoyed across communities hosting sugar projects across states. Governor Abdullahi Suli, in his remarks, pledged the continued support of the forum as a product of the sector who understands the opportunities and its numerous potentials. Recall that the federal government had in 2013 began the implementation of a 10-year master plan to revamp sugar sector known as the Nigerian Sugar Master Plan, NSMP. The four major objectives which are for Nigeria to attain self-sufficiency in sugar production, stem the rising tide of sugar importation, create job opportunities for Nigerians, and the generation of electricity and production of ethanol for industrial purposes. The first phase of the plan is expected to end in the first quarter of 2023. With Business News, Alika Opanachi Arua. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alika Opanachi Arua, for the business news package. Coming up next, News Super Review.
All right, um, let's talk uh, more about what we have this morning on the papers. We have three papers. Daily Sun is here. Leadership is here. And of course, the blueprint is here. Let us get started with the leadership newspaper and let's see what we have uh, on its front page this beautiful Tuesday morning. Um, the leadership newspaper, the front page has um, the following stories and uh, beginning from the top, uh, it's a story on page 14 of the paper. It says, and I quote, I was shot in the head. Ex-UI Deputy Vice Chancellor Abaji tells abduction story. And on page 8, again, President off to London for medical checkup. Coming down a little down the under the masthead, we have uh, the following stories. Uh, one is on page 7, and it says, Rising wheat corn prices may worsen food crisis in Nigeria. Rising wheat and corn prices may worsen food crisis in Nigeria. You get details of that on page 7. There are some few stories I'm trying to judge above that. We have a Twitter intends to charge, rather to charge $20 monthly on verified accounts. And we also have Senate Press Ministry of Justice. Justices that is 2.2 billion that expenditure. Details of that on page 2 and some other uh, today in history. If you may wish to go through and find out what happened today in history. That is going to be on page 2. The next story on the leadership newspaper is uh, about uh, politics. It says campaign, we are not broke, say Labour Party and NNPP on page 7. We are not broke, say Labour Party and NNPP. And PMB warns police and says, um, our will of Nigerians must prevail in 2023. On page 4, and the writers are, says officers must not aid rigging and that we have not released LP manifesto yet, says Obi, the presidential candidate. A little bit to the, to the left of the, you know, of the paper, we have these stories, three of which uh, have uh, one on page 10. It says, Nigeria at risk of importing Ebola virus, NCDC warns, page 10. I didn't need to consult Pao Fashoranti before I finally fairly endorsed Obi, says Adebanjo, page 20. And on page 7, we have this story that says, U.S. terror alert, needless, no cause for alarm, says the federal government. Can we move a little bit to the Sun, rather Daily Sun newspaper, and then see what's up there? Um, and then, uh, after going through the leadership, let's have the Daily Sun, and then see what we have on the front page of the Daily Sun newspaper. Daily Sun, please, let's have it. Yeah, there it is. Um, right at the top, we have Heisman list conditions for peace in communities, and then the man gazetting of 415 grazer reserves. He's have details of that on page 6. Uzo Dimash, 6 mandatory oath taken by candidates against violence on page 26. Abuja terrorism alert, federal government confirms suspects arrest. And the writers are, says security concerns raised by the United States, United Kingdom being addressed. The other writer is, urges Nigerians to go about businesses without fear. Details on page 6. Moving down a little, we have Buhari jets out for two-week medical trip, uh, medical checkup that is in London. Details on page 27. And on page 28, OB disowns manifesto uh, in circulation says it's not approved. And on page 4 of the Daily Sun, we have my salary stopped for exposing corruption at Finance Ministry claims female staff. Still on page 4, XUI DVC recounts close shave with death <coughs> in kidnappers then. On page 2 of the Daily Sun, we have letter of credit saga. Yerima seeks federal government support for air peace. A page a little bit further on page 3, state of execution, Nandi Kanu heads to Supreme Court. Now, on the other story on the Sun newspaper, as you can see, is Buhari warns police against unprofessional conduct during elections. There are details of that on page 26, and the writer is reiterates commitment to credible election. And finally, at the foot of the page, we have Atiku mocks Tinubu over a visit to Fashowanti on page 6. There are the stories trending on the Daily Sun. Yes, what do we have? So I also have a copy of the Blueprint newspaper, and we'll take a look at the stories on the window page of the blueprint. Five days after plant Naira uh, redesign, FX scarcity worsens. 
currency crashes, 800 naira to one dollar parallel market. Decision ill-timed will worsen economy, Kachiku warns. Federal government to citizens, US, UK, Germany and others terror alas false and irresponsible. Urges uh, Nigerians and residents to go about their businesses. They can't scare us in Nigeria. That's Governor Sule of Nasarawa. We're on top of the situation, Irabo assures. That's General Lucky Irabo, Chief of Defense Staff. Buhari jets out to London on medical vacation. Details of that story on page 6. Tech Fund as a harbinger of research and learning. That should be a special report on page 20. Avocado Pier has several economic potentials. DG uh, uh, RMRDC, the uh, Raw Material Research Development uh, Council. NCC committed to federal government's anti corruption crusade. Court dismisses group's bid to stop certificate forgery suit against Tenubu. At last, $1.5 billion lucky deep sea port completed. In all, 70,000 jobs expected. Outsourcing of garment making from UAE and Senegal over soon, that's according to Naseni. South Africa's biggest bank out to acquire banks in Nigeria and Kenya. These are the headlines uh, from the front pages of uh, all the three papers that we have. We just read uh, the last one now being the front page of the Blueprint newspaper. So, well, all of those seem to have, uh, you know, a lot of stories in common, talking about the president jetting out, talking about, you know, the Labour Party's manifesto, the security issue, and the rest of them. But I'm very much concerned here, Kinsley, about one story on the leadership newspaper, especially on the front page here, which is on which is on page seven. It says, rising wheat, corn prices may worsen food crisis in Nigeria. Now, the, the, the issue at stake here is, why don't just start by asking the question of, uh, uh, what have we really done as such in order to maybe learn from our past mistakes and of course from the lessons of today in order to make tomorrow uh, better for all of us. We knew exactly what really happened during the COVID-19 days and of course what the promises were as regards how, you know, so naked some say we were during the crisis as regards health facilities and equipments and the rest of them. And the promises were right there then that, um, and what is going to be done to change the face of health in Nigeria and the health facilities most especially. Here we are again facing almost the same crisis of food and the rest of them. The Russia-Ukraine crisis is there, you know, trying to stop the whole world of wheat and some other grains. And of course compounded here in, here in some parts of the world by the flood and um, uh, some other natural disasters. The main concern here is what plans do we have as individuals and as governments towards forestalling search in the next five to ten years? Because there should be a plan in place because this is the beginning of the crisis. That's what the world inherits. It is built on crisis. It keeps moving on crisis. And all of that is a food crisis, especially in this regard, where some countries here used to, I mean, try to use it as a weapon. Uh, it seems as an individual, as a nation, we should, as a matter of urgency, look towards forestalling it by putting in place a very robust, I must say, plan. Kinsley? Well, uh, good points you raised there, uh, Nadabo, uh, in terms of the nation's food security. Incidentally, the Minister of uh, Agriculture and Rural Development was also at the National Assembly yesterday for his budget defense. And one of the stories inside the papers uh, points to the fact that the Minister was given assurance that two uh, events the floods mm. and insecurity would not occasion uh, food insecurity in Nigeria. That's one leg. But you're pointing out an externality. That's to say an event that is uh, outside of our control, mm. namely the war in Ukraine. In the early part of the war, which started in February this year, and the, the Russians mounted a blockade on the export of grains from the ports uh, in Ukraine, uh, we saw the trigger mm -hmm. for the price increase uh, for bread and other uh, other flour-based uh, uh, products. Bread went from uh, 400 and something to 500, 600 and something. Now it's around about 700, 800. Mm -hmm. uh, because it was said that there was going to be uh, wheat scarcity. If you even look at some of the products that are wheat-based, such as spaghetti, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the price of spaghetti went up. This is just aside from 
the pressure on the naira uh, in terms of uh, its exchange rate at the parallel market mm. the price of it went up and i think there were some stories that also circulated on social media i think somebody was diligent enough to have counted the number of uh, sticks uh, in, the, in, yeah, in the spaghetti and he said even the number has reduced as number has reduced because spaghetti is made the size too the size yes yeah, spaghetti is made from wheat yeah at that time, the, the Nigerian government, through the uh, National Food Security Council, kicked into motion, and then the, a number of measures were announced, but uh, we do not appear to have uh, seen the impact of what those measures were on the prices of uh, wheat-based or grain-based uh, uh, foods, uh, you know, and, and other confectionaries, because the prices, as I said, are still high up there. And you're talking about the strategic uh, goal of, say, five to ten years. What do we do? Now, the, the Russia uh, and United Nations and, 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 and Turkey broke out a deal to say, okay, we would allow uh, uh, grain exports from uh, from the ports uh, well, used, by, used by Ukraine and this week, of course, the Russians have now said that they cannot guarantee uh, the safety of uh, of ships that you know are, are taken off uh, with, with grains. Uh, yeah, when they say they are suspending, they 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 they're, they're not pulled out. Yeah. When they say they are suspending, mm -hmm. so is that going to be another round of pressure for? And the, the simple question is, on the basis of what you said, they say, look, what is our strategic goal? What has happened to the blueprint? or other measures outlined by the National Food Security Council on the heels of the grains crisis arising from the Ukraine war. A number of countries, if you recall, we mentioned uh, uh, the African continent has been the worst hit by the uh, embargo on, on the shipment of grains out of Ukraine. Egypt, you know, threw in all kinds of domestic measures to boost their grain production, especially wheat. What is it that we have done here? Well, that's a very pertinent question, and that's a question uh, all of us must really try to address, as I said earlier on, that this may be the beginning of crisis, especially of food and the rest of them. Yeah, there's also the story of uh, Professor uh, Adigu Agbaje, the former Deputy Vice Chancellor Academics of the University of Ibadan, mm -hmm. who was kidnapped mm -hmm. uh, last week. Incidentally, it was an issue we discussed on Good Morning Nigeria yesterday okay. uh, in terms of the newspaper review, uh, because we were, of course, expressing concern uh, as to the fate of uh, uh, of Professor uh, Agbaje. And in the course of the program, I, I got messages that something positive was happening. Uh, well, of course, there was a restraint on uh, making further disclosures on what was happening uh, to Professor Agbaje. It turned out that Professor Agbaje got released by his uh, by his abductors. And yesterday, uh, his son uh, issued a note of appreciation on behalf of uh, the family uh, to say that, look, he was still undergoing medical examination. And you read the headline, yeah. Nalabu, uh, Professor Adegu Agbaje, indicating that uh, he was shot at. I uh, said so the the uh, the the, uh, the kidnappers shot through the windscreen, and uh, the the bullet uh, uh, grazed uh, went through his cap and then grazed his skull. Uh, that's that's a narrow escape uh, yeah. and it's a lucky one. Uh, and it just reminds me. I mean, we give thanks to God, Professor Adegun Agbaje, as we said, uh, as I pointed out yesterday, and that's part of his record. He had been a guest on Good Morning Nigeria some years ago, yeah. joining us uh, from a, a battle network center. He holds a first class honors. Uh, in uh, political science, actually the first to make a first class in post science uh, from UI. Then, of course, he had also uh, been a pioneer staff of the Guardian newspaper as a political correspondent. But the story of, of a, a, a bullet grazing his, uh, his cap and, and his call uh, reminds me of, of an essay written by Lance Morrow. Lance Morrow, one of the finest writers uh, in the U.S. The title of that essay was The Importance of Being Lucky. And Lance Morrow wrote that essay after uh, then president um, ronald reagan survived an assassination attempt uh, by uh, john hickling jr in washington dc I, I never forgot uh, nadabo mm. part of the example <coughs> excuse me i'm battling with the cold this morning i never forgot part of the example that lance morrow gave uh, in that essay he, he said that look there's a story that is told of a soldier who was on the battlefield uh, and he had a, he had a pocket uh, by scripture uh, in, in, his, uh, in, in, his, in his breast pocket and then the bullet that was uh, aiming for his heart was stopped by uh, the uh, uh, pocket, uh, that's the pocket sized scripture that he had in his pocket. That's part of the illustration of the importance of being lucky. So in this case, uh, Professor